Deuteronomy 4, 5 through 8. See, I have taught you statutes and rules as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do them in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? My name's Adam Terrell, and I'm here to encourage you to obey the law and think about it and speak about it constantly. I broke the law. Christ paid my debt by sacrificing himself so that I can be clean to offer myself as a living sacrifice back to God. The entire Mosaic law is obligatory for everyone. Keeping some of the laws look different today because the light of further revelation supersedes shadows in the old law. The temple sacrifices are an example where we have something better. Note that we must still obey the Mosaic laws for sacrifices. There is still a temple, and priests are still required to offer sacrifices. It's just that the priests, the sacrifices, and the temple are all better now. God will show grace to those who apply the law to themselves, to those who have hidden the law in their hearts, and he will judge those who disobey accordingly. I must apply it to myself, and then those around me will see its fruit and be drawn to its goodness. Theocracy grows by the sword of the Spirit, God's word, and self-sacrifice. The law's purpose is to give a path to restoration. Christ has restored me, so I must seek to restore others by sacrificing myself. Thanks for listening. My goal with each conversation is to edify and bring the law and wisdom to bear on each person's current situation in life. Let's jump into this week's interview. I was raised Protestant. I've been to a couple different churches, so I was a congregationalist, and then that was one of the uh, other churches I went to. But uh, as of late, I've kind of been going to a Methodist church, but I'm just kind of in between right now, so... I follow, I'm, I'm pretty political, I follow a lot of pages, and I saw one popped up and it said theocrat, and I said, oh, that's really interesting. And so I just kind of started reading through the content, and I thought it was uh, kind of some interesting, thought-provoking content, so I followed. What got you into libertarianism? Mainly my belief in free will, and uh, people when you're making decisions for themselves. Started uh, learning about Ron Paul a little bit, read uh, and the Fed, which is really, excuse me, really interesting book. And uh, I, I, the ideology kind of appealed to me. I don't agree with, with everything that it entails. The reference that you use for like the people uh, who are kind of like, what does theocrat mean? Like your your whole page. Don't you have like a series of videos that you uh, suggest? Yeah, yeah. The um, Restoring America YouTube series by Joel McDermott. Yeah, I've actually I've never watched those, so I'm still <laughs> part of your page still confuses me. I'm not sure entirely what it entails, but I uh, there are a couple of, like things I have noted over time that I thought were that I still think are very valid and very interesting. So you focus on like Mosaic law and the laws of the Old Testament not being you know null and void now that the coming of Christ has changed that. Um, I know a lot of people tend to, you know, cherry pick what they want to believe in terms of like homosexuality. They say, no, that that's a no, no. And then they say, you know, I think you've been very consistent across the board and saying like, this is how it is. Well, you think that you should just kill all gay people. Well, that leads into a lot of other things about like witness laws and what constitutes a fair trial and all that stuff is laid out. So it's like, no, you don't just kill somebody for being gay. It's you have to have eyewitnesses. Mm -hmm. If the eyewitnesses are found out to be lying, then they get killed instead for capital cases. So it's like you have to have like actual people witness them literally committing sodomy and it would only be between two guys. Um, so it's not really possible for there to be female sodomy for obvious reasons. Well, what about, you know, the principles of self-ownership and, and stuff like that? Well, I don't think scripture ever says that we own ourselves. We're stewards of our own bodies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why God has authority over us. Mm -hmm. Underneath God's authority for those things that we can and can't do, we do have free will for how to be most productive. Mm. There are things that I'm not at liberty to do to myself. I'm not allowed to kill myself, have sex with other men, and I'm not allowed to have sex with animals. God has set those restrictions over me. So in that sense, my view would probably be the most consistent in terms of private property rights. 
because ultimately all property is God's, mm-hmm. and He gets to dictate how it's used and how it's not used. I worked at the uh, the Tractor Barrel and also the Olive Garden, but uh, I'm actually enlisting in the military here. Hopefully, this sometime soon this year. So, have you ever slipped on a golf tee, or has anybody ever slipped on a golf tee? Um. <laughs> I've not seen someone slip on golf tees, but I have some nightmarish golf tee stories because I uh, I bust tables there, so it's just ugh. Uh, so kids will put that pegboard game. Sometimes they'll just put pegs in like various places all around the table and hide them. Sometimes they'll take the entire game and they'll flip it upside down so you can't lift it without spilling pegs everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it, it is sadistic. It is terrible. They work pretty well with your school schedule? Yeah. No, they've been really good about that. They're pretty conservative regarding our labor laws because they can get some pretty uh, pretty hefty fines if they're not. I was actually looking into that recently because I'm like, man, I'd love to be able to have my kids working by the time they're like – 10 years old and making money. And really the only thing that the state doesn't limit their hours doing is like uh, sales. Mm. So you can't formally employ a child under the age of 14. And then there are specific uh, exceptions. Okay. Like family businesses? Engaged in in non-hazardous casual employment. Mm. Uh, Casual employment is defined as work that is unscheduled and non-recurring. And then 11 years old, delivering newspapers also does not count as work. I wonder who got that law passed. It's weird. It's like, oh, gosh, all this stuff that I'm planning for my kids after I get married when I want them to have work to do, uh, like to be able to understand how to earn money. <laughs> yeah, and be responsible with that, that too. One piece of advice I'd give you is um, stay away from the military, but your mind may already be set on that mm-hmm. and plans made. But anyway, I would encourage you to at least look into the the wisdom of that decision as much as possible. I mean, the government works literally just like any other business. They want to do the least amount of work for the most amount of money. Mm -hmm. That's true for that's true for everybody. That's true for me. I want to have the least amount of time and effort put into figuring out what I can do that will bring me the most income and the most benefit for other people. And the government has unlinked customer satisfaction from their income. So they get paid whether people are happy or not. There's no bad quality of service that can change how much people have to pay. Mm -hmm. You'll get, you may get this a lot. If you do end up joining the military, there'll be people that'll say, thank you for your service all the time. All the people that I've talked to and police officers, um, I used to work on the cops TV show. They would all get so angry and just annoyed by people telling them, thank you. I don't serve you because it doesn't matter what you think. I get paid anyway. And second of all, you have no idea what I even do. Mm -hmm. That's the attitude of the police officer. Like imagine somebody saying that at a restaurant to you. Like if you tell the waitress, thanks for waiting our table. And they're like, I don't work for you. Yeah. It'd be a little bit off putting. Um, yeah. If there's anything else that I can help you with, you got any other questions? Um, just, just let me know. You got me on Instagram. All right, cool. Thank you.